In this exercise, we will learn how to use Microsoft Excel to generate random numbers to be used in selecting a random sample. Our goal is to select a sample of 150 students from a student population of 9,814 students. After opening Microsoft Excel, you will see a rectangular array of boxes that are called cells. Cells are arranged in columns denoted by the letters A, B, C, and D across the top of the screen and rows denoted by numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. down the left side of the screen. Cell A1 is the cell in column A and row 1. Cell D6 is the cell in column D and row 6. Excel has many functions. To explore some of those functions, you can click on the FX icon near the formula bar. Clicking on the FX icon opens up a dialog box that allows us to search for different types of functions. We can enter a brief description of what we're looking for or we can search functions by various categories that are available. For now, we'll cancel this window and just use a function that we already know about. We will use the RAND between function in Excel. This function allows us to randomly generate integer values between two specified values. In cell one, we're gonna type equals RAND between and left parenthesis. Notice that it gives us the syntax for this particular command. It requires that we have the minimum number followed by a comma and then the maximum number. So our minimum number is one comma, our maximum value is 9,814 and we're gonna close with the right parenthesis. And I hit enter and it's generated a random number between 1 and 9,814. Now we need to repeat this process for 149 additional numbers. Okay, but there's an easy way for us to do that. We're just going to copy and paste this formula. So to do that, I'm going to click on cell A1. And notice when I do, this cell has an outline around it. And in the lower right corner of the outline is a small square. This square is called the fill handle and it allows us to copy and paste a formula simply by dragging. To copy the formula that you've entered in cell A1 to the remaining 149 cells, click and hold on the fill handle. While still holding the fill handle, drag down until you reach cell A150. Now release, and this has copied the formula and pasted it into the remaining 149 cells. So generating those additional numbers was very simple. We needed 150 unique numbers for our sample. There may be a number that was repeated and we may need to select additional random numbers to reach a total of 150 unique numbers. To determine if we have any repeated values, we will sort our numbers. Before sorting, we need to set the spreadsheet to manual calculations. To do this, select the formulas tab on the ribbon on the right side, look for Calculation Options and click the down arrow. Then select Manual. Our spreadsheet is now set to Manual Calculations. Notice if I were to drag our formula to other cells, it just repeats the same value. It's just copying the formula without actually updating the spreadsheet right now. That's what it means to be on manual calculations. 
If you want to update your spreadsheet while it is set on manual calculations, you can click on the Calculate Now button or you could press the F9 key on your keyboard. Next, we're going to click on the File tab and double click on Options. We'll select Formulas and then beneath Calculation Options, you want to make sure to deselect Recalculate Workbook before saving. Click OK. This will prevent Excel from regenerating data and thereby unsorting it when we save our work. Now we're ready to sort our data. If we've not set the spreadsheet to manual calculation, then when we sorted the data, it would have also regenerated the data, thereby unsorting it. If you are attempting to sort your data and you keep getting new values that are not sorted, you need to go back and set your spreadsheet to manual calculations. To sort our values, we will first highlight the values by clicking on the first cell and dragging down to the last cell. So I'm clicking, holding, and dragging. It's okay that the first cell might appear to be unhighlighted. It is a part of the highlighted area. That first cell will always show up as not highlighted. We could have also selected all of the cells in column A simply by clicking on the column A label. Next, we will select the Data tab, then click on the A to Z icon. This will sort the data in ascending order, or in other words, from smallest to largest. Now we can search for any repeated values in our data. If we find a repeated value, we'll double click on it, hit enter. This will generate a new value. We can sort our data again and then continue searching for any repeated values. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and to be notified of future videos, please subscribe. Thank you.